Hey guys, I woke up about half an hour ago. Um, it is about three hours before League launch, and I just wanted to make this final video uh, to make an update as to what I'm going to be doing. I completely switched everything I'm going to be playing because after everything that's been released, um, yeah, melee, eh. Um, I still wanted to do it. I actually still wanted to play Flicker Strike even after reading all the patch notes. However, once Bex released that garb of the ephemeral chest, I was immediately sold and I knew I had to play something with the chest because I love strengths or I love stat stacking builds and I love all the curse immunity stuff. So as soon as I saw this chest, I knew I had to do something with it. So this is the build I'm going to be playing. It's going to be a CI Whispering Ice Ascendant. Basically, I built this character around, of course, mainly having to meet the stat requirements for the chest. So I have 600 or so strength. I'm going to have about 1,200 intelligence. This is going to be the build. I'm basically going to be going Valt Pact with... Um, Ghost Reaver and Chaos Inoculation, I'm going to be taking advantage of a lot of the new um, spell damage nodes, so like this eth Ethereal Feast here I'm going to be using, I'm also going to be using this Light Eater right here, along with the fact that I'm still ideally going to have, where is it, the Energy Shield gain on hit for each enemy hit. So, yeah, this build's gonna be crazy, especially paired with the fact um, of the new Whispering Ice buffs. So they lowered the cast time from 1 second to 0.75 seconds, and I believe they increased the crit from 5 to 6%, which doesn't really matter because this build is Elemental Overload, so it's it, that's not really a big deal. But the premise of the build is kind of the same as before, using Whispering Ice... Um, here, obviously, the item isn't in Path of Building yet, but this is kind of what I've made. Um, 330 ES, I added the attribute requirements, and I added the 50% more elemental damage to the chest. I'm going to be using Shaper's Touch, because Shaper's Touch is just pretty good with this, considering I have all these stats. Uh, the boots are pretty much just like any other. I mean, I'm, probably there's going to be a better version of Astramentus, such as the one on my RF Guardian, that's on standard, but until I get an amulet like that, it's going to be Astramentus. Uh, it's just pretty general um, int scaling uh, rings here, nothing too special. You're going to be using Cyclopean Coil. One thing I saw a lot in the Reddit notes, or in the Reddit comments about this chest, is that um, I saw a few people say they were going to use the... Um, what is it? The Coward's Legacy with Pain Attunement. But keep in mind that I actually was kind of... I wanted to do that in the beginning, but I actually realized that that won't work. Because what the chest does is it makes you immune to curses. So it's not unaffected by curses. So that is different from being immune to curses. So if you're immune to curses, um, the... Uh, the Coward's Legacy won't work, because you'll be immune to that vulnerability, which means you won't be on low life, because you're not going to be affected by vulnerability. So unfortunately, that won't work. So, can't go Pain Attunement, can't go with Coward's Legacy. I wanted to do that, but unfortunately it won't work. So the way I'm getting the 600 Strength requirement is a lot of my jewels are actually... These two jewels down here are going to be Inertia's. Um... Typically, you would generally see these be the ones where they convert dex to int. However, since I need strength, uh, these are going to be dex to strength um, nodes. I'm getting the int and strength down here. I'm getting the strength here. I'm getting the strength here as well. Oh, I actually don't need this dex node anymore. Um, oh, that frees up one more point. Would you look at that? Uh, I don't know where to put this point, but I'm not going to get to level 100 probably, so it doesn't matter. Um, so some using some nodes here just to convert... The strengths, so like this one here as well, I'm using an efficient training right here just to get the last bit of strength that I need, otherwise I would be low. So, it does definitely take a little bit of requirement from the tree, but I think this build is going to be pretty damn good. Um, as you can see, even with only 1200 intelligence, I actually have an average hit of 30k, which is a lot more than my other build 
which was um, 1800 intelligence, which was right here. So I had um, 1800 int, and I think on this one, I only had 20k. So this one completely converted to um, int, and the damage is actually not as good. So, where, damn it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, uh... There it is. Um, so this build is actually going to be stronger. The skills I'm going to be using with Ice Storm is going to be Spell Cascade, Cold to Fire, Cast While Channeling. Hold on, I am missing... Hold on, hold on, hold on a sec. That's why it's strong. I'm missing something. I am missing Scorching Ray. Hold on. I'm not supposed to have all these skills here. Uh, let me just take off Iron Will. Okay, so that's a little more realistic. Okay, I'm because I'm, I'm missing Scorching Ray. Okay, so it's Spell Cascade, Cold to Fire, Cast Wild Channel, Control Destruction, Ellie Focus, um, Scorching Ray. I'm gonna I might play around with those, so maybe Iron Will might be better than one of those since I have so much strength. So maybe I'll um, kind of switch them around and play with it. But that's gonna be basically the build. Other than that, everything's kind of the same. There's nothing really different with it. I decided not to go hybrid. Um, a lot of people in the Reddit comments were saying that they're going to go hybrid. And I understand where that's coming from because we have 600 strength, which is a decent amount of flat life. That's like 300 flat life. However, um, I just didn't see the appeal because if I don't go CI, my starting life is only 1600 and then it would be just a lot of investment to get more life. So I'd have to take discipline training, heart and soul. I'd probably have to come down to the um, the scion tree. And then I'd also have to deal with the problem of getting chaos res capped. So I just didn't, didn't find it to be worth it personally. So I'm still going CI. And I think it's just going to be a lot better because then... That's just going to allow me um, just to have to focus on keeping my energy shield topped up, and I can easily do that with all these new spell damage nodes. I actually didn't take a look at the staff nodes, so maybe those even might be pretty darn good as well. The crit, we don't need that. Uh, we don't need that. Um, Air of Effect. Uh, this one actually might be decent. 3% increase AOE for power charge. We don't really need any more Air of Effect. Um, the sp ooh, the spell damage one might be kind of nice. Hmm. So I'll look into that. Maybe I'll, I might get some of those staff notes, but this is the build I'm going to be running. I have no fucking clue how rare this chest is going to be or at how, at what point people are going to start seeing this chest from what it drops. People are speculating that it's some kind of one of the end game bosses in synthesis. So basically my plan is to roll a regular whispering ice. And a, once I get my hands on these chests, I'm pretty much just going to switch out the jewels um, pick up the strength nodes, and I should be pretty much set to go with this Whispering Ice um, uh, Garb of the Ephemeral uh, build. So yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get the chest. Probably not a leak start build, but as I said before, I'm going to do it anyways. And yep, so this is what I'm going to be playing. Oh, here's my Ascendancy, by the way. So I'm going um, Inquisitor and Elementalist. Probably not my best picks. I I would have liked to probably go pure elementalist instead on which, however, um, it would be very hard to get down to Valpact. Well, it would basically, yeah, it would be challenging to get down to Valpact. And uh, I think Ascendant would just work just a tad better. And we can also utilize pure talent. So we get 25 all attributes from the Scion. We will get 0.5 max um, mana regenerate. Oh, actually, hold on a second. I don't need this either. Okay. I don't need the max mana regen. But anyways, um, we go Templar also. We get that extra 5% pen because we start at the Templar right there because we get the Path of the Templar. So, and we get all the extra skill points, of course. So, this is going to be my build. I think this league's going to be great. I actually still have a lecture from 10th. 10.30 to 11.20. So right after my lecture, I'm racing home and I'm going to be starting this build. And I'm still probably most likely going to be playing softcore because I just want to get this chest and I know in hardcore this chest is going to be worth a fuck ton of money probably and I just don't want to wait or accumulate that much currency and then just die. So 
Yep, I think I'm going to be rolling softcore this time around, and I'm going to be playing this Whispering Ice Garb of the Ephemeral build. So, fun stuff. Um, I will put this path of building in the description if anyone is interested in seeing it or playing it as well. And I hope everybody has a good time with this league that's about to release. I'm excited. Hope you guys all have fun. Hope you guys all find mirrors in um, the first act. And <laughs> I'll... Um, See you guys later.